Okay, I don't know what's happening. Um... <laughs> Why is this happening to me? Hello? Can you guys see this? Well, this is a fine how do you do. Let's see what I can do here. I don't know if anybody knows that I'm live. Um, I can't even see stream chat. What the hell is happening? Uh, hello? Okay, so for some reason, chat is broken, so I had to pop it out in a different window for people to see. Okay, so you guys can see me, right? And hear me? So I'm not entirely sure what happened, but OBS crashed <laughs> without me knowing. So, uh, I did get a donation from, uh, Smile, or no, Smiley? Smiley. And they donated $50, thank you. Thank you, even though, uh, this stream is so far a complete disaster, and I don't know why this is happening to me. Um, OBS is my streaming, uh, my streaming program. See, you need, you need a program that records your screen and, uh, puts it on YouTube in order for you to stream. So, that's what I use. I use OBS. It crashed on me. I don't know why it crashed on me. Things were going just fine. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know why this is happening, why chat is, uh, refusing to work. Yeah, I can't, I can't see chat unless it's in a completely different window, which is super annoying. Yes, you did hear a meow. That is a cat. That is my roommate's cat. Okay, so if everybody can can see me and hear me and stuff, then I guess I will continue with trying to stream. And I'll make sure that OBS doesn't crash on me again. Again, uh... So, so since I'll have to delete the, the five seconds of stream that, uh, that I did <laughs> before OBS crashed on me, thanks, um, I guess I'll make this announcement again, just for future reference, in case people don't see that part. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be part of a, a multi-stream thing next week. Starting, it starts tomorrow with uh, Sonic Song 182. They're doing like a Ask the Sonic Heroes Live thing. Um, and then there'll be other people participating, like uh, Sasso, a bunch of VAs are, are doing it, uh, like Super Nintendo. And my part is on Thursday. So, next Thursday is when I'll be doing that. I, I'm going to be, again, I'm going to be doing something that people have been asking me almost every single stream, is uh, to redesign Sonic EXE. So I'll be doing that. So if, 
you're excited, or if you've been wanting to do, if you've been wanting me to do that, and you want to see me do it live, uh, uh, it's next Thursday. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get rid of Let me just go ahead and unlist that. There we go. And now we can get back to work. We can get back to work on that. As soon as I can find my pen. If it's not one thing, it's the other. Okay, I found it. <sighs> Absolutely. It's an absolute nightmare. This is the worst thing. It's an absolute disaster of a stream, but I'm glad you guys are sticking with me. Because it's always a disaster when it comes to my streams. You know how it is. Anyway, I got some donations. I just saw. Parker Green donated five dollars. Uh, Blake as Mewtwo. What do you think? That sounds fun. And then Silver the Hedgehog twenty two donated five pounds. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I couldn't make the Undertale streams, and I didn't want Delta Rune spoilers. Here's some monies. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for being patient with me <laughs> and donating regardless of how much of a disaster this stream is. It's okay. We can get back to work. Get back to work. We can put SMT in a nice little outfit. Um, that that is a little too much ear. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm. There we go. Cool thing about drawing a person facing frontward is that you can just copy paste each body part until they're mirrored. Hooray! Go ahead and shorten these a little bit. There we go. They look less like bat ears and more like decent these ears. Do you have a DeviantArt account? I, I do, but I never use it. It, uh, it has a bunch of old art on it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend following it because I'm never gonna uh, use it because it's just... I don't feel like using DeviantArt anymore. It's not a good platform anymore. <laughs> if you like using DeviantArt, that's fine. I personally do not because it's not as good as it used to be. Fluffy Jackie donated... I'm guessing these are Australian dollars, ten dollars. And they said make SNT look super special in a Halloween costume. I will work on that. I am working on that. <laughs> hmm. Get the face centered on, then we'll start on the clothes. Just redraw this elbow. Mm. 
So it looks more like an elbow. There we go. Hello? Eh? Oh, I see what happened. There we go. <laughs> I got my layers mixed up. So let me just go ahead and layer, uh, <laughs> label these uh, folders. Hello, this is. I would follow you on Twitter, but it's a scary hell of a website, so I don't even dare to create an account. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, Twitter's not that great. You, you're not really missing very much. I just use Twitter because uh, there isn't really any good alternative anymore. I used to use Tumblr to post all my art, but uh, then uh, very major changes were made to Tumblr, and that caused a lot of people to leave tumblr forever so it's not very active anymore and it's really upsetting <laughs> twitter sucks but i can't stop using it yeah ain't that the truth i use it be again i use it because i have nothing else that i can use for it hi hi talking about you dumb bitch. I did nothing! Why does this keep happening to me? This entire... This entire stream is a nightmare. My my mouse fell down for no reason. Why do you still have your shoes on? I don't know. Anyway, what are you talking about? I was talking about Twitter and how we use it because there's nothing else to use. Yeah, I mean, I didn't use it for a very, very long time. Um, because I just... I didn't understand it. I made a Twitter account in like 2013. Yeah, same. And I tried to use it, but I just didn't understand the format. And I was like, oh, what's the difference with the retweets and the, I don't, why, why do the words appear above the thing? And I, I don't know how to follow a thread. I don't know how to find like the chain of tweets. Um, and then Tumblr died. Yeah, I only use Twitter because Tumblr died. All my friends went to Twitter and I was like, man, I did miss my friends, so. Also, look, I've been sitting on Panda for so long, I flattened her. Oh no! Ah. Let me give her a break. Blow for backup! I'm trying. Man, I'm not feeling this pose at all. And this is the second pose I've done. I did a face forward pose because the side pose just was not working with me. This is the original. And like, the. I don't know, I couldn't figure out how to draw the second leg. I don't know. And I had that, but like, no matter how I drew the second leg, it just didn't look right. And I don't know what the problem is. Um, well, the way this leg is, you only have so many options, right? Yeah, I know. Because the then problem. the balance is off. So pretty much your options are to have the other leg out as well and do like a wide stance, or you're just going to have to redo that leg. But yeah. between this and the front-facing one, this is a lot better. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just see if I can get this pose to work. <laughs> Cause the other one just, I don't know, it's so flat. Yeah. I spent like two hours this morning trying to get a pose to work and I just couldn't. You should try my method, it works every time. <sighs> I couldn't, I couldn't find a good mad scientist pose is the thing. No, 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 the dance. The uh, that's dance what I'm mode. talking about. <laughs> You have to kind of, I mean, if you're looking for a specific pose, you kind of look up songs that convey the same, like, you know, theme. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that leg yeah, probably has to go. <laughs> but how am I supposed to draw the, the other leg? I mean, the or draw another leg, because, like, I tried redrawing the legs 20 times. <sighs> Nothing works. Are you are you starting by drawing the legs, or are you doing sticks to plan it out? Because you should probably try doing sticks to plan it out before Just, you commit to it. I don't know. I usually don't have this problem. I mean, so it'd be like that sometimes, though. Just... Mm. 
Because like the hips are here, mm -hmm. right? But that's that's too sharp of a line. There we go. The hips are here, the shoulders are here. Mm -hmm. So you've got this. There's well, a I have nice some curve. ideas for how I do it, but I don't know if you want to figure it out yourself or if you want suggestions. Mm -hmm. I'm open for suggestions. It, it was already on another layer. Yeah, well, why is your UI different from mine? Are you on a different version? Probably, I, probably on an older yeah, version of CSP. Different. Okay, so like, yeah, the pencil. So I would probably do something like, like that sort of thing. Yeah. Like confident, relaxed. Mm -hmm. Is where's your control Z? Do you have a hot button for that, or do you just? Okay. Or if you want, if you really want that leg out. Right, so this one's lower, and well, this would be the weight-bearing leg. Yeah. If she's leaning that way, that would be the weight-bearing leg. Yeah. So then you would. Where's your eraser? So then this one. Well, actually, it needs to go further in. Even. So this one would kind of be going like that, and then this one you could either like have it even further out and do a toe point, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you could have it cross in front and be like a. Sexy pose. <laughs> Sassy? I yeah. mean, that would work. Yeah. So I, w I would recommend either doing, like, X legs. X legs. Or this, like... Well, you'd have to do it this way, I suppose, since that's the weight-bearing leg, but kind of like a... You know, it it's gonna have to be, like, dynamic yeah. somehow. So... But you gotta keep in mind which leg is bearing the weight. Or... So it's something like... Nah, that's too forward. That wouldn't work. Does we cheer? <laughs> you have shit in this house. <laughs> Get up from your chair for five seconds and then there's a cat in it. Yeah, that that's how it works. So we got that, so we can just get back to the Both of those layers. Kick him out. I wish, I wish we could install a, a electronic cat door. <laughs> All right, that's it. Why is he being so mean? Oh, no. I wish we could inst install an electronic cat door where, like, we can control when it's locked and unlocked. So, like, we don't have to leave the door open, but we can still let them in and out. But then also, if we don't want them getting it at all, we can, like, set it. And be like, now both are locked. <laughs> Come here, Alex. Come here. Come here. Do you want me to do it? 
ruin your butterfly. You want something to maim? Here, kill the butterfly. You love that. Toy has been through He's fucked it up, but he like one counts and it stops spinning. Mm. What I, did you do? I don't know. What did you do, you monster? You killed him. He was just fluttering around you in his life and you killed him. Thank you for the two dollars, Parker Green. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I think Jaleel White is a little too old to be playing Sonic nowadays. Uh, back in the day, he was fine as, like, cartoon Sonic. Because it was a cartoon, so it was okay if he sounded a little goofy. But... If he did... If he did classic Sonic nowadays, it just wouldn't seem right. Because he can't really do the voice anymore. He voiced Sonic in the uh, that one Sonic fan film, uh, and it wasn't good. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that they kept classic Sonic mute. It, it gives him an interesting personality, in all honesty. I think he, his, it's cool that he has that, like, that, like, silent film character. That silent film quirk. But that's my opinion. If you have a different opinion, then that's fine. Feel free to discuss your own, uh, Opinions about classic Sonic in chat. Just don't get crazy Can I trust you guys to not start a fight in chat? No. <laughs> yeah, this is a little better So This leg is a little too long. There we go. There we go. I didn't put this in a large enough bowl and now I can't mix it properly. <laughs> Daniel Lobau? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that, I'm sorry. Donated two Russian dollars. I'm guessing that's what R, the R stands for. Uh, hi Courtney, uh, will there be more ST stories? Possibly! In the future, I do have a few more ideas. Um, it's just uh, SNT videos take a lot more time and effort to make since they have like voice acting from other people and stuff, and I have to make all the assets myself. Because the, the most recent SNT video took like two years to make. <laughs> Cause, and that, that time was spent, uh, just making all of the stuff and waiting for people to have time to record for it. There. There we go. That's a better pose. Thank you for the help, Netson. You're welcome. 
So I'm, I'm talking in the Discord server more about cartoons, and I'm trying to explain the way I feel about Billy and Mandy, because I do love that show. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of like I was telling you when we were watching uh, the Halloween special, but like... I don't think there's a singular pair of characters in that entire show who demonstrate a care for one another. No. Nah. Like, there are there are occasions where Mandy not so much worries about Billy, but like tries to not let him die. Yeah. Um, but it's usually it usually is illustrated as coming from more of a place of like I need that little shit as a pawn rather than I don't want my friend Billy to die. Yeah. But just, that's just how she works. Yeah. But it, it's not just her. Almost any character in that I don't think there's a single character in that show that is like nice to another character except maybe like Nurgle to his son. Maybe. And and Grim sometimes. Grim sometimes, but, but mostly, Grim, Grim mostly is... he exists in eternal damnation. Yeah, Grim is very much a, a punching bag. <laughs> yeah, and I feel so I feel that and it's like again in the Halloween special, like they're like, you're our best friend, but they don't mean it like that. They mean it like you're our property, and yeah. it's so sad. <laughs> I mean, that's, like, the premise of the show. It's, like, te these two snotty kids, one the Grim Reaper in a, uh, a limbo contest. And now they have total control over this, uh, this figurehead of evil, and, uh, and they just use him to, like, bake them cakes and, and give pony rides. Somebody said, I can't see Erwin being heartless. And it, it's not that they're heartless. And it's not that, like, like they just fuck each other over all the time because they're so dumb. Yeah. And they're, like, Billy constantly. How many times has Billy gotten Mandy and Grimm almost killed just because he was, like, too dumb to realize? It, even though you, it seems like it would be obvious. Like, yeah, making a pact with some random scary dude to seek revenge on your friends will probably lead to them being murdered. But he just doesn't think of that. Nah. <laughs> and like, like in particular in Irwin, like Irwin's, you know, he's. I mean, he's nice to everyone. He's not mean to anybody. But I mean, outside of just lusting after Mandy, I don't. And like, you know, he's best friends with Billy, but they never like. You know, it's not like a loving, warm, supportive friendship. It's two boys who know each other and yeah. are kids. Yes. <laughs> Like, kind of have to be friends almost out. It, it's like your friends you had at school, where, like, honestly, if you didn't go to school together, you probably wouldn't even be friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, there's so many. Uh, the chat's trying to catch up, because I had a... a... Trying to, uh, catch up. Nickelodeon almost had a show like Billy and Mandy. It was called Mina and the Count. Oh, that sounds interesting. I swear to God I've heard that before, but I don't know. It's really weird how, uh, TV, TV channels have shows that are almost the same thing sometimes at, at the exact same time it's it's kind of like the zeitgeist mindset you know mm -hmm. like how american dragon jake long and juniper lee existed at the same time and nobody cared mm -hmm. <laughs> or like the adams family and the munsters that those two shows premiered seven days seven days between one another and like nobody batted an eye. <laughs> the R is Brazil coin. Oh, okay. That's good to know. It's hard to keep track of all these different kinds of of coin. Coin. I need the coin. That's kind of like um, and I don't know what I'm thinking of. I'd have to find it again. Um, sometime today I saw a post that was like company is coming out with new thing and I, I can't even begin to remember what it was but I specifically remember seeing it and be like that's a lot like 
other thing that came out recently. Are they releasing that because it came out recently? But then I saw that it was like, you know, was in development for a while. So clearly it wasn't like a copy. It just accidentally happened to be a very similar thing. Yeah. And this happens all the time. It's so weird. It was something I saw on Twitter, but I cannot think of it now. So. Did you see they're coming out with a new Drawn to Life game? I reacted to that. Yay. I'm excited about that. Drawn to Life was a cool, cool series. Oh, uh, Drawn to Life. Yet another thing that seems fun and innocent at first, and then it gets really weirdly dark. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're just like, oh, I'm, I'm drawing, and there's little cute I'm people running my... around, and oh, oh, they're fucking dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawing my OCs, saving these little creatures. Oh, wait, what? The ending? Oh, no, they're in an accident. Oh, no, the boy is dying. Oh, no! <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> Why does this keep happening? I, I know that I, they- I believe, I believe the other games get, like, even darker, but I never played them. I only played the first yeah. one. The- I know the ending to the second one was the one with, like, the boy in an accident. But they changed that in later releases because it was too dark. Did they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fucking grandpa dies in the first one, yeah. so... Spoilers for Drawn to Life, I guess. <laughs> I, I, well, it's a game that came out, like, a long time ago. And it's in, like, top 10 WTF endings in children's games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number... Number 6, Drawn to Life. That made me have a train of thought. But I'm not sure if I should talk about it. <laughs> How... I mean... I mean, we bitch about people all the time. And, like, no shade. No shade. But can I talk about Aki Dearest for a sec? And how she makes so many- I don't know if she does anymore. I don't know how recent they are. I just see them pop up in the results sometimes. It was like, top 10 disturbing Vocaloid songs. Top 10 Vocaloid songs about child abuse. Top 10 Vocaloid songs about animal abuse. Top 10 Vocaloid songs about cults. And it's like, okay, all right. You can, you can just, you can stop. <laughs> You're making the same video over and over again. Mm -hmm. Vocaloid songs can be scary. We, we get it. Most of them are. Most of them are, because Japan be like that. <laughs> not, I mean, it's not exclusive to Japan, but considering a large percentage of Vocaloid producers are Japanese, you know. Yeah. Those Japanese and their goddamn key changes. <laughs> <laughs> Imitate chills. I don't know if I could do a good chills impression. <laughs> Top 10. Creepy Vocaloid songs. No. <laughs> Number like you can, eight. <laughs> you, we can interpret or impersonate his like style of speaking, but considering we're women, uh, yeah. it's only so far an impersonation can go. Sephiroth. Uh, somebody said Aki Dearest doesn't make those kinds of videos anymore, so. Okay. I, I don't, I don't actively watch her. I just, like, sometimes when I'm looking at Vocaloid songs, I see, like, eight of them in the results, and I'm like, this is just the same video over and over again. <laughs> okay, now to get a good mad scientist outfit, because there's a lot of different, like, girls mad scientist costumes and all of them are really cute and I'm mad ha huh, that they didn't exist when I was a kid because I so would have worn it I would have worn these costumes because they're so cute like hello this one's adorable and this one well, that's an adult one, but it's not as cute. This one, though. That one's cute. I gotta figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Why 
nachos throw like Eggman? Because that's too easy. That's too on the nose. We want fun, cute Halloween costumes. Yeah. Like the stuff you find at Spirit for like $80, even though it's like one dress and maybe a pair of gloves if you're lucky. <laughs> you know, like... As an adult, I obviously enjoy having, like, a lot more, uh, versatility in my choosing of a costume and the ability to cosplay and things like that. But I almost miss the simplicity of a child and just going to the store and being like, alright, which of these, like, girly, spooky things do you want? <laughs> and kind of just having it, like, simplified for me. Yeah. So, I think, like, the last year I ever wore a costume store costume for Halloween was that one year uh, that we went out to that one neighborhood and I was like a, I was like a ninja geisha thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, a, it was like a very Americanized punk ninja. I think it had like pink skulls on it. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, not gonna lie, it's kind of dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like this. Where it flares out like that. I want movement in this outfit. Man, I wish I could remember what I was thinking of that came out, but now I cannot find it. And I don't remember if I saw it on Twitter or Discord or what. I I just remember seeing it and being like, this is really similar to the one thing that came out recently. What a coincidence. I've always liked being a witch for Halloween. Yeah, like, I... I'm the kind of person where every year I want to, like, do something cool and interesting and, like, over the top. But this year I haven't been able to properly plan that. It's been kind of a hard year to focus on things. You know? Like, my last year my costume, I dressed like Detective Sylveon. That costume rocked. So much. Here, I'll, I'll bring it up for you guys. I will I will find pictures of that. Because I... I, I uh, posted it on my Twitter. Oh, wait. Hang on. Google, help me. Aha! Thanks, Google! You're better at searching on Twitter than actual Twitter! <laughs> Let me just pull that up. And OBS. Image. Grab that. Y'all can talk shit about Tumblr all you want with that tag system, though. Tumblr's tag system was a godsend. Yeah, so this was my costume from last year. See, I went com all out. I was Detective Sylveon. I made those, those ears and the bows. I made those. They're made out of wire framing, pipe cleaners, uh, some felt, some lace, and a white ribbon, and a white headband. And the detective costume, the detective hat and cape, I was lucky enough to find uh, on the internet. Uh, the dress I already had, the, the skirt underneath I thrifted from Goodwill. Uh, the bag I won on Toreba. And I dressed up, <laughs> I dressed up my Sylveon plush, because of course, and then the boots I already had, the boots and socks I already had. Wait, is your face blocked out in that photo? A little bit. Because okay. it's got the hat and I'm holding up a magnifying glass. I was gonna say, how many people 
how many uninformed people in the chat are being like, oh my god, face reveal. Oh my god, face reveal. <laughs> it's not face reveal. I've revealed my face multiple times. Oh no, chat's going crazy. You look like you can star in a movie with Ryan Reynolds. If only. So yeah, that was my costume from last year. SNT knee reveal, uh oh! <laughs> You know, thinking about it, a mad scientist would be a cool costume idea, but, uh, it's, it's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. it's like nine days until Halloween, I don't know if I'd be able to pull that together, because <laughs> I've been struggling so much, because I have, I have, like, several ideas on what I wanted to do, but, like, I've been having such a hard time making them work. I'm so disappointed in you. I've been having a really hard year. Maybe not. You've forgotten who you are. Who's the girl with a giant tote of craft supplies in her closet? Me. Who's the girl that put together a Sonic cosplay in one day? Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I did that for uh, the online Sonic Revo. Because I, I, I literally was like, I'm going to challenge myself. Can I put together a, a cosplay in three hours? <laughs> and I did. Uh, I got nothing out of it, but I did it. I and mean, I'm satisfied with that. But, uh, I don't know. Something about this year, it's Ooh, just... What could it be about this year? Yeah. <laughs> you know... This year hasn't been very good on- on anyone's psyche. Um... Damn, this is girl who cool. randomly made handcrafted pieces of costumes for me that I never even ended up putting together. <laughs> like, the mommy hat, the Uboa face, even like, I did end up wearing that, but... The- the mommy hat is like one of my best pieces of work, honestly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that supposed to be? If, if only someone had preserved it. Well, yeah. I, it just... I, it got lost in the swell of things. <laughs> uh, a lot of things did when I, uh... uh... Not to get too deeply personal about my life, but the apartment I was living in uh, at the end of high school we got evicted from, so we didn't really have time to, like, pack carefully. Uh, shit was just shoved into boxes and shoved into the storage unit, and many things got broken and damaged and lost, so... Yeah. There's a good number of items of mine that, uh, that are lost to time. I mean, literally, you saw I found the hat. Yeah. But, like, the charm itself, long gone. Uh, my my little Zaki in a jar found that for the first time in like ten years. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Nashon. Yeah. Oh, uh, tangentially related, I don't have all of the gold-plated Pokemon Burger King things. I thought mm -hmm. there were only four, but there's not. There's like no, six. there's there's six. <laughs> I don't have Poliwhirl and I don't have Togepi. Togepi, yeah. It's like Pikachu, Jigglypuff, Mewtwo, Togepi, Poliwhirl, and Clefairy? I, <laughs> I think it was Clefairy? Um, I'm gonna see who I have. I know I have Mewtwo and Pikachu at least. I don't remember the other two. Uh, Pokemon Burger King Burger King. Oh yeah, it is gonna be a full moon on Halloween. That's gonna be fun. Let's see, how do I want the the I have inside? Mewtwo, Pikachu, Jigglypuff, and Charizard. Charizard, okay. So yeah, I don't have Polyroll, I don't have Clefairy. So what am I gonna do in the middle of this? Maybe I could 
Give her some tights. That would be fun. What if I, like, created a costume on SNT so good that I was like, damn, I want that. Because <laughs> it always yeah, happens. Knowing you, like, Because <laughs> it always happens. Like, every time I put SNT in an outfit, I'm like, man, I wish I had that outfit. <laughs> You know what, a train of thought, I, I, sorry, I, I do this so often, I bring up things where I'm like tangentially related and then I say something that's like, that wasn't really related at all, but, um, <laughs> one of my friends once told me that if you design an OC, uh, with clothes that you already own, it automatically makes them a Mary Sue. And mm. I think that's some bullshit. It is. Because you know what? I have some really cute clothes. Yeah. And maybe I just want to put them on a character. It's not yeah. to make it a self-insert. <laughs> it just so happens that I have clothes that I like that I think would look good on my OCs. Damn. Yeah. Like, I've done that before with s &T. Like, literally when I was uh, designing, like, a... A winter outfit for her I was like I have a really cute winter outfit that I like to wear and I bet it would be fun to draw and I bet it would also look really cute on s &T. and then I put it on her and that was her permanent outfit for the longest time because it was so cute mm -hmm. and like I know I know that that uh, that particular thing that like like your OC having the same clothes as you is on, like, the Mary Sue test, which is, like, a, a big thing on the internet. But, like, I don't care. <laughs> at this point, at this point in time, who cares if your OC is a Mary Sue? Mm -hmm. Like, who cares anymore? If you're, if you're having fun with your, with your character, and not hurting anybody, then, like, who cares if they're Mary Sue? Like, it can be... F See, like, this This is gonna make me sound, uh... Like I'm contradicting myself because of my videos, but, uh... I make fun of s &T in the past because I know I can write better. And even though your character might be a Mary Sue, if you're a good writer, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that does not matter. <laughs> Look at how many characters that are mainstream that are Mary Sue's, like Harry Superman. Potter. Harry Potter! <laughs> Although most who... anime protagonists. <laughs> Superman. Batman. <laughs> like half of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The reason why I make fun of my my past S and T stuff is because I can know I can write better, mm -hmm. e with a Mary Sue character or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Game Grumps just tweeted out Hope Grumps or Despair Grumps. I'm this is this, this is, is gonna end so badly. I'm so afraid. I'm so scared. I'm so afraid of this. First this. Now Hetalia's coming back. Hetalia's coming back? You haven't heard yet? Yeah, Hetalia's coming back. No! I, no, I no, 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 we cannot have Italia come back. Do people remember what happened last time? I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I don't think these kids know. It was such. It was such a special time in like 2000. What like 2008 to like 2011 ish uh, was when Italia was like super duper strong. Mm -hmm. Like Italia kids were the kids at school who would growl at you unironically. Yeah. Like they were. They were not just weeaboos. They were psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> It, it just, it was- Also, of, some of them, unironically, uh, pretended to be Nazis, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, also, not just the fans, but, uh, people really like to ignore the fact that Hetalia has some really strong imperialist, uh, tones in it. Yeah. It, it does. <laughs> it's, uh, not, not good. Mm -mm. Maybe, maybe, uh, 
maybe Hitalia coming back and now it'll have a different fan base this time. No, oh, it's all the same people I already know. Time is a circle. Silver the Hedgehog 22 donated two pounds. I gotta go. Can't wait to see the pin next finished pick. Okay, thank you. X Hunter XX donated $2.99. Dong and Rumpa Game Grumps? Oh god, oh no. I know, I'm very scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Wait, what did they say? I wasn't listening. Danganronpa Game Grumps, oh god, oh no. Yeah, it's- and listen, my fear is specifically with how the fan base is gonna take it, because the Danganronpa fan base is also, like, a petri dish of nightmares. Um, and I just know, I just know, because of how the Game Grumps are, they're gonna be talking over the game, and, uh, like, I've, I've seen people, like, worried that they're gonna talk over gameplay and then they won't know what to do and they won't know how to get through the trials because they'll have missed all the evidence. Um, number one, Danganronpa does not let you miss evidence. It beats you over the head Yeah, with especially it. the first game, because mm -hmm. it's just like, ding wow, ding! Wow, a knife! Did you find a knife? Yeah, I found a knife. What could this knife mean? I don't know, let's look at the knife! Because, God damn! Because Nayagi is just like, what is this? That is a knife. A knife? What's a knife doing in this room? It could be a clue. Let's add it to the list. I guess we added that knife to the list. Let's keep looking. Okay. Yeah. But um, no, my fear specifically is is obviously they're going to be riffing over the game. That's what they do. But what they're not because of the riffing, I sincerely doubt they're going to have the time to develop emotional attachments to the characters. So, like, a lot of the fans are gonna go into this and be like, oh boy, I can't wait to see how they react when, when this person dies. It's gonna make them so sad. It probably won't. They're probably gonna meme on it, and the people are gonna be mad. So, like, how can you not be sad this person is dead? How can you meme on their death? And they're gonna revolt. It's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, also, somebody asked, what's it? What's Hetalia? You sweet summer oh, child. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> so, uh, TLDR, Hetalia was a, a four coma mm -hmm. of uh, the persona. You should tell what four coma is. Uh, a four coma is a four panel comic, comedy comic. That's a... Uh, it's stuff like Azumanga Daio and... If, if you read manga, a lot of the times they'll have four comas at the end as like bonus things. Yeah. So, Hetalia is about the personification of countries during the Second World War. <laughs> and um, it mostly focuses on Italy, Japan, and Germany. The Axis powers. And the racist ones. The racist ones. <laughs> and it's just like, haha, look at, look at Italy being a dummy and Germany is all serious and Japan is just like Japan the stoic one. Japan is a sweet one. baby who can't do anything wrong. Hmm. hmm. Written by a Japanese person. Hmm. <laughs> Never mind the fact of, as to why the the Second World War even happened. You know, the murdering of millions of, of Jewish people. Also the fact that a lot of the fan base that was into it was literally preteens and were literally not developed enough to understand any of the nuance of actual world relations. So they just be like, oh my god, wouldn't it be so cute if Jimmy and America were dating? And it's like, guys, 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 please, guys, I'm literally <laughs> begging you. Please don't do this to me. Also, the fandom was like super rabid and most of them were Fujoshis. If you don't know what that is, it's a person that's really into yaoi, which is uh... But not for gay rights! <laughs> not you. Yeah. They don't give a shit about gay rights, they just want to see their bishi boyfriends holding hands. Yeah. Well, doing more than that, but yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. But yeah, uh, so... It... Hitalia isn't, uh, really for me, honestly. If you like Hitalia, whatever. Just, like, uh, just we're not sitting on the source material itself, because Italia as a media isn't terrible. I mean, again, it does have that imperialist overtones, because guys, I hate to break it to you, but Japan is not this perfect utopia you believe it is. They're kind of super racist. They, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, other than just, like, the kind of, like, implications in it, it was fine. It was just a harmless, like, comic. It, much like Steven Universe and other things that were fine until they weren't, it evolved. Yeah. 
Oh, it evolved. It evolved, and, and my god, did it evolve. <laughs> you know? It evolved much like humans, getting steadily worse over time. Yeah. Until it was a broken, crippled version of what it used to be. Yeah. And had back problems. Yeah. <laughs> and didn't, didn't uh, do most things correctly. God, being a weeaboo in the early 2000s was such a ride. People, kids today don't even know. <laughs> yeah, the early 2010s anime fandom was a nightmare. Even before the 20s, because I, I would argue that by like the mid 2010s it was calming down. Mostly from like, from like 2005, 4, 5 to like 20, like 11, 12 is when, it's, when it was at its like absolute height. That's when we had like weeaboo stories on Tumblr. That's when we had cons with the fucking Yaoi paddle. Yaoi like, paddles! <laughs> oh! I'm so glad we put kept that in the past because my god, that was too much. Yeah. If you guys don't know what a Yaoi paddle is, uh, there's a video about it on YouTube. Um, just search the... If you if you search like the history of Yaoi paddles or something, it's yeah, it's a yeah, <laughs> yeah, Huntrix. I am also terrified of what's going to happen because we've just now, as a as a collective, as a society, as a society, <laughs> we have come to realize that Danganronpa ain't that good, Chief. Listen, I still love Danganronpa to death, but it, yeah, the creator is. Uh, the has creator some questionable views on things. Yeah. Namely, uh, women and the LGBTQ community. Yeah, yeah. So, but we, uh, it's one of those things where we pr we close our eyes, we pretend we do not see. Yeah. It's just, uh, most the most the one thing I am worried about is well, I I'm not too worried about it because Game Grumps tends to be a lot more, uh cautious about the stuff like this, but as a as a, col a collective fandom of Danganronpa, we've come to realize that chapter 2 of Danganronpa 1 sucks! Yes, sucks so bad! It sucks so bad. It's not. Mm. Literally the only good thing that came out of that was the dream OT3. Yeah. But yeah, it's a... Uh, it's one of those, and it, god, it was so bad, too, back in the Twitter days, because people were like, you guys just don't understand, Japan is just like this, and it's like, okay, listen, Japan as a whole, conservative, yes, um, that was over the line. <laughs> Yeah. That was beyond. Uh, we're, we're not going to spoil anything if you're trying to uh, play Danganronpa, mm -hmm. but if you want, like, a little bit of context... Just to be cautious about it, there's transphobia. Yeah. Like, big amounts of transphobia in chapter two. It is not handled well. And the, the worst part is, it's not, like, the character isn't even really trans. Yeah. Um, but it's... It, the it, way it's handled, it, it can come off. It comes off as really disrespectful. Mm. And, like... The, the thing about it is that the, the story of this character comes from the mouth of Monokuma, aka the person that you can't really trust. Mm -hmm. So I don't trust a single goddamn word that that bear says yeah. about other people, mm -hmm. especially since he does some other stuff later in the game where he, he purposefully messes with cases to make them more interesting mm -hmm. and lies about stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So we we will never know what actually happens. To, uh, what what actually that the the issue with that character was, mm -hmm. what they identified as. But uh, it, just just for future reference, if you're interested in Nong and Ropa and you're you're a little iffy about that kind of stuff, Chapter Two is gonna be hard. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. And it's sad because I actually like that character a lot. I loved that character with all of my heart and soul. <laughs> They're very cute. They're very sweet. The problem is just like, and it's it's so hard because like again, it wasn't like 
uh, things just got muddled. Yeah. And it is, and part of it is because of the difference between the way Japan and America portray things. But like, again, assuming we can trust what Monokuma says, that character wasn't actually trans. It was more of like a cross-dressing thing, but yeah. that in and of itself gets kind of weird. Yeah. Because then, like, you know, people, people, especially we of those, uh, mm-hmm. aren't super good about the difference between genuine uh, trans people and, like, drag or cross-dressing yeah. or, like, gender presentation. Like, just because you present one way doesn't mean you necessarily identify that way. And you identify it. Yeah. Heck, there's there's problems with that in the Black Butler fandom because there's a character that uses she her pronouns, and uh, because the Black Butler fandom is so obsessed with Yaoi, they uh, they like to pretend that that person is male, and you know that's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, I see. I as someone who's never watched Black Butler and has only seen fandom stuff, I thought they were a male and no, no. they were just like feminine presenting. No, no, no. Oh, oh dear. They use she/her pronouns. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh guys. X Hunter X X. Yes, yes, they are the sweetest character in Danganronpa, and it's not fair that uh. That chapter is such a dumpster fire, an mm-hmm. absolute dumpster fire. It is not good. And honestly, the way they did the culprit wrong, because I liked the culprit too. I, I came to like like them more over time. And yeah. then I was going to be like, nah, they were just uh, transphobic and misogynistic and that's why they killed them. And it's like, how dare you? Yes, B, anime is fucking bonkers. I agree. <laughs> Oh, this is very cute! I like this a lot better. Oh, I like it too. Yee. I like this pose a lot better. Thank you for your help, Natchan. You are welcome. Let's if see. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's posing. If there's one thing I'm bad at, it's every other step of art. <laughs> see, you can help me with posing, I can help you with colors. True, true. Like, I, I can kind of put palettes together, but sometimes I'm just like, what the fuck? Oh, I didn't even show you what I ended up coming up with for this. Look at this massive improvement. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yes, I'm, I'm giving S&T her super hair because it's very... Uh, it, it, like, spikes up like mad scientist hair, so it works. Oops. There we go. I like it. I like it like that. I wonder if any of the takes we've given today are gonna come back to bite us. Nah. <laughs> okay, well, we're already digging the hole. I'll tell you something else. Guys, oh boy. Attack on Titan isn't a good show either. <laughs> <laughs> Attack on Titan is also imperialist propaganda. Shocking, I know. Oh my god, you're just you just keep digging your hole. I, I'm sick and tired of seeing Attack on Titan paraded around as such a good show when people aren't capable of reading the subtext of it. Yeah. It's literally imperialist propaganda. The creator of it literally believes Japan to be the only decent nation on earth. <laughs> And again, it's one of those things where, like, can you separate the art from the creator? Yes, except for when their work is also imperialist propaganda. Yeah, it's a... Listen, you can like the show. It's whatever. You just gotta be mindful of the the themes. You have to be critical about the content you're consuming. Yeah, it's good to be critical about, about things. If something seems off about something, it might be. Just, you know, be mindful of that stuff. <laughs> Goggles. Yeah. 
yeah, 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 I like this. This is fun. As a trans person, I love Chihiro so much. Well, I'm... We're trying. We were trying not to spoil it, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the Chihiro discourse was so like, ah, uh, and I, you know, I tried to stay out of most of it as like a cis person. Yeah. But, like the worst thing was people on Tumblr like, like, because again, in in the game they try to stress that uh, Chihiro was kind of just cross dressing, but like, it's so open. Like, if you had get in them as trans, it's perfectly fitting and it's perfectly fine like it's a perfectly okay way to interpret that character it doesn't really change much about them but people would be like yay i love chihiro they're my trans like favorite character and then people would be like chihiro's not trans and it's like okay all right i <laughs> just let people enjoy things damn Shh, let people enjoy things that's like when people get mad when people headcanon sonic as trans which Good hand cannon. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and people are like, Sonic's not trans. They've never said anything about anyone's sexuality. That means it's not true. Like, who, like, who cares? Here's who the cares? Here's you gotta think about, right? If that character were trans, what does it change? It changes what nothing. What does it change about them? It changes nothing. nothing. He's still Sonic the Hedgehog. He's still, like, speedy, gotta go fast yeah, man. You people are always like, oh, well, I'm fine with the trans and gay characters being in media, but they don't have to shove it in my face. Okay, well, if we're headcanoning this character as trans, and it's so subtle that you can't tell the difference anyway, isn't that what you asked us to do? Yeah. <laughs> to be subtle about it? Well, yeah. we're being subtle about it, and you don't like that either, so... <laughs> if I can't do that, I might there... as well just dress them up in the trans flag and point and laugh at you. Yeah. They're, they're just homophobic. Yeah. People who, people who take offense to other people's headcanons that are literally harming nobody are just homophobic. Mm -hmm. It's like the same people that get mad when somebody draws a, a character as something other than white. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it's not- it's hurting nobody. Literally it's hurting literally time, nobody. Literally the only time race bending is a problem is if you're bending a POC. Yeah. If somebody who's already POC and you're bending them, like, even if you bend them into another race, like, if you make, like, a black character, like, I don't know, Filipino, like, yes, that's still an underrepresented, like, person of color, but that character's identity, most likely if they're black, was intrinsically tied to the black experience. And turning them into anything else really undermines that. Yeah, for sure. It's not cool. And they'll be like, oh, like, I don't see the problem because I made them another POC. And it's like, yes, but not all POC experiences are the same. Mm hmm. You remember, kids, it's perfectly okay if somebody likes to draw a white character as a black character because that character still exists in their original form. It's just someone else's yeah. interpretation. They're not taking anything away from you. Yeah. You literally have all the representation in the world. You have- if you want any representation that's white, straight, male... Take your pick! There's a million billion characters! Mm -hmm. But if you try to draw a- a black character white, that's fucked up. That's horrible. That's up. terrible. Because you are actively trying to censor actual representation of somebody that doesn't have as much representation. Mm -hmm. For sure. I know this is a terrible way to start off a sentence. But speaking of race discourse... <laughs> <laughs> speaking of race discourse... <laughs> um, since that new Disney trailer dropped, I've been seeing some people say uh, that it's... I don't know if they're necessarily saying it's problematic, but I've seen some people expressing disappointment that it's not uh, representing a real world like Asian culture and instead just like fantasy Asians. Yeah. And obviously I'm a white person. I have no uh, take on this, but if, if anyone in the chat has is like 
Asian or a Pacific Islander and has like an opinion on this, I would love to know more about it. Yeah. Because I, for, I for wanna... me, white, I don't think about it. I'm just like, ooh, brown people. But, <laughs> yeah, just... You know, that's kind of the issue is that we're just like, oh, we put brown people in a movie. Look at us. Look at us go. But it's yeah. like, well. Yeah. As, as a person who isn't as a as a white person, obviously, we want to learn more about other people's cultures and figure out from other people's experiences what's good or bad mm -hmm. because we do not that get, get that kind of uh, education. I mean, we've literally <laughs> been taught if you like if you just put like a token black character in something, that's good enough. Yeah, and obviously, it's not. Mm -hmm. But I just, I guess my question is just, like, should the movie and should more movies be trying to replicate or, like, pay homage to real, like, cultures? Or, like, are fantasy Asians, in this case, like, intrinsically problematic? Yeah. Because I don't know. I don't have enough experience to know. If you didn't want me to talk so much, then why did you come to a live stream? Well, somebody's mad you're talking to <laughs> Yes, me? they're like, STOP TALKING! No. Like, n this is my stream. I can talk as much as I want. If you don't want me to talk, then, like, you don't have to be here. People wa usually watch these streams because they like talking and hearing me talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, I understand we're talking about some, like, divisive topics today, but... But, you know, that's just where the conversation ended up. Mm -hmm. And, and like I it, think it's very interesting. If you don't like it, mute it, damn. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can mute mute the stream and just, like, play your own music. If, if you really want to watch me do art but don't want to hear the sound of my voice, like, it's your choice, man. But this is a live stream, this is my live stream, and if I want to talk... Uh, this much, then I will. I usually don't talk this much, honestly. But I'm in the room. So but I'm yeah, but my sister's in the room, and we're having a, a deep and and in very fascinating conversation, and it's uh really really catching my attention. Can I can I just say real quick? Thank you so much for the the magic wand method. You're welcome. I very much prefer this. Yeah, I know, it's so much more... I just like it more. It's just way easier to do it this way. Well, like, I never even knew it was a thing because there's not, like, a button for it. Yeah, I I set up those things myself because it's just easier. Like, the the, the bucket tool helps me on, like, persona pieces because the art style I do for my persona has really thick line art, so it's yeah. not usually a problem. But on my regular art, where my lines can get as thin as, like, 2px, then we have an issue. Mm-hmm. Because it always goes over every time. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Shinobi-chan. They said, I mean, who wouldn't want to hear your soothing voice? Like, seriously, you sound noi- <laughs> you sound nice. <laughs> Thank you, I really appreciate it. Unlike me with my shrill-ass nightmare of a voice. I think you have a nice voice in that song. I have an okay voice, but when I get excited, I start, like, shouting everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do that sometimes, too. Literally, if you guys went to my stream uh, a couple weeks ago, where I just randomly started going off about Star Versus, oh by my the God. end of the stream, I was so mad that I couldn't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when I get really passionate about things, I just, like, I go off. Mm-hmm. Ah! There we go. Go. I'm going to make this thicker. 
Yeah, like literally every button on your CSP UI is different from mine, and it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird to see. Yeah, it, it's an older version of CSP because I, I am lazy. I didn't, uh, I didn't update it. <laughs> it has fixes, I assume, probably. Yeah, it does. Like, you, you can, uh... I know one of the fixes is you can uh, move text around without turning it into a raster layer. <laughs> I just you can't do that. And nope. You haven't updated. <laughs> Why? Because I forget, and it's gonna take forever. Do it when you're not on the computer one time. Damn, book. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. And I mean, I thought I was bad. The girl who will literally, like, dehydrate herself to death rather than get up and get a drink because, like, fuck that. <laughs> but you... <laughs> the girl who would literally, like, I, I would be, like, so thirsty, but I didn't want to get up, so I would wait until, like, one of my parents inevitably came into my room to check on me, and I'd be like, hey, while you're here... <laughs> while you're here, can you give me some water? I'm dying of thirst. Will you run downstairs and grab me some water, please? And most of the time they would because I'm a spoiled brat. Parker Green donated five dollars. Have you heard of Squirrel and Hedgehog? I have. I watched the Saber Spark video about it. It's very interesting. Interesting in like a, a morbidly curious kind of way, you know? It's a cartoon made in North Korea. Oh, the propaganda one? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, or I just forgot the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> it do be like that. It'd be like that, though. North Korea is really interesting. Not in a good way, honestly. No, it's a, again, it's like a morbid curiosity kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, uh, I'm a big stupid nerd who watches documentaries for fun. And there was one night, I don't remember why, but somebody in a video I was watching mentioned North Korea, and just like on a whim, I was like, I bet there's a good documentary for that. And so I looked one up and watched it and was just like, wow, that sucks. <laughs> wow, it really sucks. I'm just surprised that a place like that exists on this planet. Yeah, it's, you know? it's really weird. You know what I'd like to learn more about? I wonder what the differences between the North Korean and South Korean languages are because they've yeah. been separated for so long. I'm gonna Google it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like, sure, let's let's go down that rabbit hole. Sure. Wikipedia article. That's handy. <laughs> There's a Wikipedia for everything. Favorite Luigi's Mansion out of the three? Definitely the first one. The first one is superior to... to all three Luigi's Mansions. It's got the best as atmosphere, the best story. There's just something about it, you know? Like, there... There is never going to be a game like Luigi's Mansion ever again. Ever. And... Nintendo has tried really hard with the third game to recapture the feeling that the first Luigi's Mansion had, and they almost had it. They almost had it. There's just something, something's not right about Luigi's Mansion 3. It's still good. It's still a really good game. Just, it's not the same, you know? It's too linear. Yeah, it's very linear. Like, you do- you still go back for, like, treasures and stuff, but it still has that very linear Also, it feeling. doesn't feel as spooky. Yeah. 
Some, you know what? You know what's the problem? Hmm. They changed the ghost. They did change. The they ghost, changed yeah. the ghost, and it ruined the whole feeling. Mm -hmm. The well, ghosts look too nice. I feel like the first one was a lot more like unknown, right? Like you didn't know. I mean, at, at least at first, you didn't know why you were there. You didn't know where Mario was. You didn't know what this house was. You didn't know what the ghosts were. There was so yeah. much about it. And the second one, it's like there's like a there's a specific like a villain like right from the get go. Mm -hmm. Um. And you know exactly where you need to go, and in what order you need to go there, and and cause and it just it didn't feel the same. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to read this article, and it's using a lot of big words, and I don't fully understand what I'm reading. <laughs> uh, letters have different names. They're they're pronounced the same, but they're different. Mm. Like like they're pronounced the same, but it's like like if they called a zip instead. <laughs> mm. Oh yes, that's the letter zip. <laughs> like the difference between Z and Z. Yeah, kinda, yeah. <laughs> um, Kraz donated two dollars, thank you! And I'm seeing things here that, like, like there's things I don't understand because I'm not, uh, big smart, but things like... <laughs> I don't have big brain. <laughs> like it says, like, uh... Let's see... The consonant digraphs, which I don't know what that means, are not treated as separate letters in the south, whereas in the north they are. I, I don't understand what that means. Hmm. Oh. Uh -huh. Sounds big brain. In the north, consonant vowel digraphs are treated as letters in their own right and are ordered after the end of the simple consonant and vowel letters. In the south, the digraphs come between the basic letters. things which I have never learned how to read. How do mm -hmm. I pronounce upside down E? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just spell e. it out phonetically. E. <laughs> like, I'm a basic bitch. I need you to spell it out like, you know, K-E-H hyphen, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, in this position, a uh, Korean character is pronounced as N rather than Cursive R. Cursive R. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Cursive R. What does cursive R mean? <laughs> it's called a liquid consonant. Is that like a what? They, is that like in Korean when they go like like that? I, I don't is it that know. Sound? Maybe it's that sound. I don't know what it means. I took French in high school, and <laughs> even I don't know what a liquid consonant is. Well, it might be. It might be distinct to like this language. <laughs> Liquid solid <laughs> solid consonant liquid consonant. Things are pronounced differently. That's kind of just the like <laughs> naked consonant. Ooh, during the 2018 Winter Olympics, the two the, the, the two Korean countries decided to play jointly for the women's national ice hockey team. This led to issues with the South Korean athletes communicating with the North Korean athletes since the former uses English influenced words in their post war vocabulary, especially for hockey. Well, the latter uses only Korean-inspired words for their post war vocabulary. Yeah, that's right. Huh. The language differences also pose challenges for researchers and for the tens of thousands of people who have defected. The defectors face difficulty because they lack basic vocabulary, use different accents, or have not culturally assimilated yet, so they may not understand jokes or pop culture references. Well, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> they're, they're cut off from all kinds of pop culture, so that makes sense. Is it bad? I genuinely liked forces. Not because of the story, though. I like forces. Like, I like forces because I had fun playing it. Um, the story does have its problems, obviously. 
But as a genuine gaming experience, it's not bad. Like, uh, I don't understand why a lot of people say that Sonic 06 is better than Forces, because at least you can play Forces. Every time I tried to play Sonic 06, I ran into a, a glitch that, like, impacted my gaming experience. The first time I ever played Sonic 06, um, bought it from a flea market for two bucks, uh, took it home, um, played it for maybe, like, I, literally in, like, the first, like, not stage, but, like, there was, like, a boss encounter where it was in some kind of, like, arena thing, and mm -hmm. I had to, you know, homing attack onto the dude. I jumped up, I pressed the button to attack, Sonic launched out of the skybox, <laughs> he was ejected from gravity, uh, and I was stuck in blackness until I reset my console, and all I did was press the attack button. That was it. Yeah. So, you know. And I, I distinctly remember doing that, and just sitting there with my controller looking at the screen going, the legends were true. <laughs> I'm telling you! <laughs> I thought it was an exaggeration, but no. my god. It's- it wasn't an exaggeration, y'all shoulda listened to me. You guys wanna hear something even funnier? Um, when I went to the flea market, the, to the time I was at the flea market, uh, I was on a date. <laughs> and I got so distracted and excited by the concept of owning Sonic 06 that I ended the date early to go home and play it. <laughs> so- <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. I didn't like him that much, so it wasn't a big deal. Well, but, uh, you know. <laughs> But I was just like, I was just like, do you know what this is? And he was like, no. And I was like, ugh. Ugh. You disgust me. <laughs> and I went home. He actually, well, we went home together because my parents were our ride because we were in the ninth grade. So we couldn't, or was it the 10th grade? I don't remember. Um, but, uh, yeah, we went home and uh, he was like, my mom's going to come pick me up in a little bit. What do you want to do until then? And I was like, play Sonic 06. And he was like, oh, do, do you want to, like, watch something together? And I was like, no, I want to play Sonic 06. <laughs> and I want you to stop talking. <laughs> You've got priorities. <laughs> You've got your priorities set. Man, why have I been single for so long? I can't possibly <laughs> fathom. <laughs> Which enforces they gave more avatar options like fox, robot, dragon, or something. They were gonna have more more animals in forces. They just got cut because of time. Like they were gonna have like they were gonna have horses and deer and dragons and I think echidnas were on the list, which is really weird. I'm glad they got rid of that because that makes no sense. Also, uh, rigor mortis donated a dollar. Thank you. Very fitting for a Halloween-themed stream. <laughs> I remember when you first found out about Sonic 06, because you were at my house, and I was showing you a video that had uh, Sonic 06 cutscenes in it, and you were like, wow, this game looks so good. It's <laughs> so beautiful. It's, look at those cutscenes. Those are beautiful. And I was like, this is the worst Sonic game. This is considered to be the worst Sonic game of all time. And you were like, really? Why? Yeah, I think that was before I watched the Game Grumps too. Yeah. So I didn't even have that exposure to it. I still remember when I first started watching Game Grumps. Um, cause, cause, you know, you watch them and I would hear them sometimes. Um, and I distinctly remember, I was like, how do you even listen to this? I can't tell their voices apart. They sound like the same person. <laughs> and looking back now, I don't know why or how I thought that. I just, I mean, being unfamiliar with them, I guess, but... I don't know, sometimes adult men sound the same, so I can understand why you would... Why would why you would have that problem? I remember I, the the hardest thing I've ever had to do was learn to differentiate between the McElroy's voices. Yes, they sound so similar. The McElroy's sound really similar, and sometimes, depending on how they're talking, I cannot 
if, tell if apart Travis and a, Justin. If they're putting on a voice, I cannot tell most of them apart. Yeah. <laughs> Their natural speaking voice, I've, I've learned how to tell them apart, but if they're doing, like, if they're voice acting, I'm like, like which one is that? <laughs> Leandro also agrees that the McElroys sound the same. <laughs> yeah, like, if you if you listen to the McElroys long enough, you can tell them apart because each of their voices are just subtle enough that you can pick up on that. Mm -hmm. Griffin has the most, like, normal voice. Yeah. And Travis has, like, a lisp. Yeah, Travis has... Travis's voice is a bit more... Like a bit more nasally, and he has a lisp. Griffin is very like baseline, and Justin has a, a deeper, richer voice. Mm. Kind of, kind of. I think. Well, out of all of them, well, yeah, I guess it's it gets easier <laughs> if you listen to them more and more. Yeah, for sure. It helps if you're if you're listening to the Adventure Zone because then you can, uh, you can uh associate their voices with their characters and then you slowly but surely learn who is who mm -hmm. that way speaking of which uh you know how for their live shows now they they cosplay yeah um i swear if i ever saw justin in a taco cosplay in his talking in his taco voice in person i would die <laughs> i would drop dead on the spot. <laughs> I would be so happy that there's nothing else in this world left for me to see, and I would cease to exist. <laughs> Someday we'll see the Adventure Zone live. Someday. Yeah, we've seen the Bim Bam live, but I want to yeah. see Adventure Zone live. Have I, uh, hi, I'm Saki McGee, and Taco Taco is one of my comfort characters. <laughs> yeah. Taco is a, is a very good character. Matters so much to me. Yeah. I'm so happy that I spread uh, the Adventure Zone through my fan, or through my family, through my friend group like a disease. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm happy that you you forced me to listen to I the adventure zone. To listen to it, and then they forced their friends, and then they forced their friends, and I'm so good, glad that I did that. <laughs> I still haven't listened to any of Critical Role yet, which I should, but there's just so much of it I'm intimidated. Yeah, I I was watching a uh, a Sonic on Win Eighty Two stream, and KN also listens to the Adventure Zone. And people were suggesting other other D and D podcasts, and she put it into words. The reason why I struggled with uh, getting into the Adventure Zone, she she specifically said, "I have a hard time getting into things that are really far ahead because catching up seems like a chore." Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like kind of what she said, but that's basically the gist. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's just like, oh, there's so much, and each episode's like an hour and a half long. How am I supposed to keep up with all this? Well, that's why I got into the habit of like putting it on while I was cleaning. Yeah. And just like zoning out to it. Like that that's the only way to listen to podcasts is to zone out to them. You don't just sit down to listen to podcasts. You multitask that shit. Yeah, yeah. It's way better. Like, that's how I, and I, I never finished Night Vale, but that's how I got as far into it as I did, so I just put it on while I was, like, drawing or something. Which, I really need to finish it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it's still going. Maybe. I know they're still doing live shows. I've been to one of the Night Vale live shows, and that shit slapped so hard. <laughs> And I tried, they have another, they have another one called Alice is Not Dead, and I listened to that for a little bit, and was kind of into it, and then I kind of fell off of it. It wasn't as good as Night Vale, for sure. Mm-hmm. Nothing will ever be Night Vale. <laughs> that, there, I so love the, I don't know if you want to call it a trope or a genre of, uh, this shit is spooky and weird, but we're never going to acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> Just the like, this is like, oh yeah, there's a floating cat in the bathroom. There's a what? There's a floating cat in the bathroom. What? What is? Why? What? Is, what? Is, what? 
Anyway, would anyway. you like some pizza? <laughs> Like, oh, don't mind the baby. It's just trying to summon Satan again. What? It, it happens. Don't worry about it. I love that. I, again, I don't know if you want to call it a trope or a genre, but I love that. <laughs> Specifically, especially when it comes to, like, spooky things. Yeah. Like, weird, unsettling things. The Especially, like, stuff like, I give you a hamburger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys want to have your entire perspective on the universe change, look up, I give you a hamburger. Thank you, Parker Green, for the $2. Do people, like, unironically like Ugandan Knuckles still? Because, like, I thought that died in, like, January of 2018. So or was it 2017? I can't remember. It had to have been 2018, because I remember watching a VR chat Ugandan Knuckles video in the break room of my old work. Mm. And, you know, that was a January meme, so I was- I had to have, uh, already been moved in at that time. Mm -hmm. So. January memes are always the worst ones. Yeah. What's... January memes and, uh, the meme that fights to be the last meme of the year. Yeah, for sure. What's the worst January meme? I'd have to look it up to even remember which memes came around in January. Yeah. You, I think Ugandan Knuckles is, like, really high up on that list. Because, like, it was funny at first. Like, it it was funny because people were just being dumb on the internet. Mm -hmm. But, like, then people wouldn't stop doing it. And then it got really annoying really fast. <laughs> and, you know, people also still quote that do you know the way thing on my videos even if there's like no reference to it at all and that's uh really annoying fun fact children uh it's not funny if you just quote a random meme that isn't related to the video uh it it just makes you look really annoying <laughs> no offense it's just one of those internet etiquette things, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see, 2018. Uh... No, I guess you got in Knuckles, it was actually 2019. Are you sure? Yeah. No, it couldn't have been. Well, it's not 2017 and it's not 2018. It couldn't have been because... It couldn't have been. No, what it's are 2017. you? Twenty seventeen. That's what you know your meme says. Oh, I did move in. No, wait, no. Uh, time doesn't make sense. <laughs> time doesn't make sense to me. Oh, okay. Oh, it started in 2017. Yeah. The VR chat stuff took off in December of 2017. Okay. So, so technically it started technically in December. It's not even a January meme. It but... started in December, but then, like, it took off in January. And then it, it mixed in with the other January memes. Internet memes by year of introduction. Oh, God, it goes all the way back to 2000. <laughs> What's in 2000? Let's see. Like, you're the man <laughs> now, Star Runner and John Titer. That's it. Ah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. 2001. 
Freddy Got Fingered, Techno Viking, YTMND. Oh, YTMND. You're the man now, dog. 2002. Rip. What? The every time you masturbate, God kills a kitten. Oh no! Which we, which we went way off into. <laughs> Kuso miso technique. What is that? Oh, uh, it's the Bara face funny man. Oh. <laughs> 2003. Badgers. Badger, 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 badger. Oh my God! Oh really? Happened in 2003. Oh my god. 2004, Leroy Jenkins, Numa Numa. Leroy. I'm only listing the ones I know, by the way. There's more. But, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, 2005, Diet Coke and Mentos, Flying Spaghetti Monster, Me at the Zoo. The beginning of YouTube? Yeah. I, I got a ultimate comment. Ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. I got a comment. I think it was earlier today on the uh, the video that was like it was the animation I did for Liz's uh, Sonic OC Shocker, and it said this video came out seven days before I was born. What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, the children. The children. You want to hear the memes in 2006, Nathan? Sure. They perfectly sum up 2006, and you're going to feel such a wave of nostalgia. It sure hit me. Angry video game nerd. Uh-huh. Fred Figglehorn. Uh-huh. Hada Hada Yukai. Oh, my God. It's over 9,000. Oh, my God. Little Superstar. Oh, my God. Little Cat. YouTube poop. Oh, my God. <laughs> the first YouTube poop. What a magical year. 2006, whenever I'm talking about, like, nostalgia, 2006 is the year I immediately go to. It was such a year. <laughs> it was quite the year. 2007, uh, Two Girls, One Cup. Hmm. Air Don't Man look that up. Oh, man. Airman Got Talos and I came out in 2007. Oh, damn. Jeez. Chocolate Rain, Dramatic Chipmunk. <laughs> Oh my god. Keyboard Cat, Lazy Town, Meet the Team, Never Gonna Give You Up, Rage Comic, Rick Rolling, Rule 34, Rule 63, Success Kid, This Is Sparta, Tanak Tanak Toon, University of Florida Taser Incident. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, 2008. Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, Lost mm -hmm. Comic, Troll Face, Foxy. Boxy. 2009, Annoying Orange. Uh, Bazinga. Oh, God. Candle Cove. Crab Core. David After Dentist. Homestuck. Slender Man. Thanks, Obama. Yada yada does it. Yada yada does it is from 2009? Yeah. Jesus. Alright, 2010. Bed Intruder Song. Devil Rainbow. The man your man could smell like. <laughs> Red and blue pill. Keanu Reeves. T pose. Wojak. Oh, the confused math lady is from 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Magnets. How do they work? It's from 2010. People are also like freaking out about how Yada Yada Daze was for 2009. Yeah, like it started in 2009 and it got a resurgence, uh, you know, a couple years ago when JoJo became like a big thing that people were suddenly interested in. This thing lists Scumbag Steve as being 2011. I thought he came a lot earlier than that. Oh, yeah, it says it became popular in 2006. Well, then why is it on the 2011 page? Hmm. Uh, Nyan Cat, the crazy, the crazy nasty ass honey badger. <laughs> Friday. Oh my God, Friday, the Friday song. No Nut Bo November started in 2011. <laughs> 2012, ain't nobody got time for that. Bad Luck Brian, Bane posting. 
Oh, the Bikini Bridge came as like a thing in 2012. Hmm. Dio Brando. Call me maybe. Dog shaming. <laughs> Dog shaming. <laughs> Dumb ways to die. Gangnam Style Grumpy Cat. It's gonna be May. Oh God. Gangnam Style did come out that long ago. Gangnam Style came out when I was like first starting college. I was a senior in high school, so. <laughs> Coney 2012. Oh god. Overly attached girlfriend. Reply girls. Oh god. I'm so glad. Like uh, I'm... Sanic. Oh Sanic. The start of the Shrek fandom. Somebody that I used to know. Anyway, what are you saying? Sorry. I forget. Well something about Sanic probably. That's one of those classic memes that never get old. 2013, don't draw my life, Florida man. What does the fox say? Ugh, gallon smashing. Fuck anyone who did that. What happened? When you go to the store and you grab a gallon of milk and you pretend to slip just so you can throw the entire gallon of milk on the ground oh, and like pop it. That's not cool. If your challenge, uh, if, if your challenge inconvenience is a minimum wage worker, fuck you. Yeah. If if your challenge involves messing with people that are just trying to do their job, it's not a good challenge. It just makes you look like a bad person. Makes you look like um dead. Rapping for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Bonzi buddy. Oh yeah, cause that's when Joel streamed the first Windows Destruction. Joel really started a ton of memes, didn't he? Yeah. Press up to pay respects. <laughs> 2015. Bernie Sanders' is dank meme stash. <laughs> the Charlie Charlie challenge. Cursed images. Uh, dab, dab boy, don't talk to me or my son ever again. Dab boy. The dress. The dress. Megalovania. Ocean Man. Why was Ocean Man popular in 2015? Because of Vine. <laughs> what are you doing? I can't do it. I can't do the interpretation of the boy. <laughs> Ocean Man, take me by the hand. No, his is like infinitely more shrill. Yeah. Than that, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected John Cena. <laughs> Twenty six. God. Twenty sixteen. Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> what? Twenty. Do you don't know about Bodie McBoatface? I don't remember this. It was there was a contest to. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was some company was releasing like a new like boat or like christening a new boat and so they put it out to the internet to like vote on a name and somebody jokingly suggested Bodie McBoatface and that got the most votes and so that was the name oh my god and that was considered good enough to be a meme in 2016 my god oh god the Lorax came out in 2016 oh, I know it yeah. came out in 2012 but 2016 is when a lot of things like fell in how place how bad meme <laughs> <laughs> the Nut Shack. It's the Nut Shack. Robbie Rotten in 2016. Oh, yeah. Anyway, they were, man, the original reason I was looking for this was to find January memes. I can't find a good list of January memes. Hmm. Actually, you know what I think is the worst uh, January meme of all time? Hmm. Ultra Instinct Shaggy. <laughs> well, like, like it was funny at first, but then it just became Chuck Norris the second. It's just the same joke over and over well, at least that Shaggy, Shaggy isn't is a racist piece of shit. I guess that's true. Also, but... I'm sending you something awful. Yeah, the Lorax movie sucks. I agree, B. Here, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. Let it grow kind of slaps. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put that out there on God. <laughs> yeah, I like this. That's funny. You know what was actually a good meme in and of itself? What? People, uh, posting leaked memes from future years and it was just an assortment of random images. Mm -hmm. And you would just be like, honestly, I could see this becoming a meme. Yeah. January meme, dabbing Squidward. Yeah. It wasn't even a meme, really. It was just a thing that happened. And people were like, haha, he dab, and he's Squidward. Yeah, I agree. That is the worst January meme. didn't understand why people thought it was funny. Because it, it was just a thing that's worded funny. That's it. That's all it took to become a meme. It just... And then it Sometimes just, it just, it just things that a, think you think are should be memes don't need to be memes. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just as much of a meme as when we quote, like, Spongebob in specific situations. Mm. It's just like, a situation makes you think of this specific sentence, and so you say it. <laughs> But people, like, after a while, people started to loathe that meme. <laughs> yeah, because people wouldn't stop saying it for no reason. So I'm gonna send you something. Okay. And at first you're gonna really like it. And I'm gonna tell you something about it that's gonna ruin it. Oh, okay. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to fix this line. There we You're go. You're gonna love it, and then I'm gonna hurt you. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. Those only come in children's sizes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the wings light up now, John. <laughs> Why would you tell me this after saying that? I just saw the thread. There's Skechers shoes, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, why do kids get the cutest clothes? It's not fair! Why do adult clothes all have to be so boring? And the th stuff that isn't boring costs like a hundred dollars! Mm -hmm. And more! It, you know why? It, it's because the, the stuff that isn't boring is handmade and they have to charge that much because mm -hmm. they, you know, it's handmade and they have to buy all the materials themselves and it's not being made in a factory. Like everything on the shoe bakery? Yep. Which kills me every time I look at it. And those really cute food purses. It'd that be so lovely. Yeah, be so lovely. I got an email uh, from be so lovely and apparently they're having delays for the Ichigo chokers and I'm sad. Aww. Do you guys want to hear something funny? Spent $90 on, like, fancy custom handmade earrings. My ears aren't even pierced anymore. <laughs> but I had to own them. It's fine. I'll just get them pierced again uh, when it's safe to be within a couple feet of people. Yeah. Or I could parent trap it. <laughs> no, Netsha! That'll give you an infection! I already have an infection. You'll get from, another one! From whatever numb nuts pierced my ears when I was like 12. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. I know I had to get my ears pierced two different times because the first time they did it so bad and it closed up. One time was at Claire's and one time was at Walmart, but I don't remember which time was which. Mm. They used to do ear piercings at Walmart? I think they still do. What? Yeah, they did it at the jewelry counter. I will never get my ears pierced at Walmart. Listen, I was a child. I didn't know. 
I just remember like every time we were, they used to have a big if you don't remember they used to have a big sign above the jewelry counter that would say like ear piercings here or at least at the Walmart near my house they did I don't know and uh, I don't remember I when I was in like the second grade I wanted my ears pierced so bad I wanted it more than anything and every time we went into a Walmart I would see that sign and I'd be like oh you know what we could do while we're here mom you get my ears pierced please. And then, and then, you know, got my ears pierced while I was in a uh, dance. I was a dance major at school. Went in the next day. My teacher saw my earrings and was like, what the fuck are those? And I was like, earrings? And she's like, you know, you can't wear those during recital, right? And I'm like, um, well, like, I just got them pierced, so I'm not allowed to actually take them out for a couple weeks. And she's like, well, we have a problem then. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> she ended up having to let me wear them because, you know, I couldn't take them out. Yeah. But, uh, I got in a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> my, my French teacher, or not my French teacher, my dance teacher, uh, was an angry French woman. And uh, when she was angry, she was fucking angry. <laughs> she would go off on us. <laughs> she was the lady who we went on that field trip, and while we were on the bus, we were talking too loud. So she got up and she was like, you are walking on a very fine line! And we're just like... <laughs> Courtney, can you react to the Jealous movie you made? I did that um it was the video where <laughs> the I video was the, the video where I talked about the the movie the script um I don't know why you would want me to to react to it again when I was the one that made the video that makes no sense I'm sorry <laughs> It happens. It happens to the best of us, Nashon. Does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we all have lizard brains sometimes. Yeah, well it doesn't help that I'm also just really slow at art in general, so mm -hmm. that compounded with my distraction, my fucking attention span of a cactus. <laughs> shave your art very often yeah but when you do do you do it by individual color or do you merge every color on the thing and just shade it all together uh so when i do shade i have like several methods of methods of shading depending on my mood and uh how much effort i want to put into the shading the fast cheap method is to have all the colors, the flat colors on one layer, duplicating it, using tone curve to darken it, and then go through each little piece and erase most of it so a bit of the dark is left. Huh. That seems that's like, like it would take more effort. That's the dirty method. <laughs> that seems like it would take more effort than putting the shadows down. Well, it, like... It, it saves me from having to uh, do guesswork on picking the colors for the shadows. Well, no, but I mean, like, it, it seems like subtracting takes more effort than 
drawing in the shadows, mm -hmm. if you ask me, but I don't know. Yeah, and the other method is, you know, picking out the the shades and then going through each individual piece and putting in the shading and, you know, uh, smudging it and then adding the highlight underneath the shade. Mm -hmm. So, cause that's how I get, like, that uh, vintage Pokemon card look. Mm. It I call it the Paper Mario shading because that's how they shade characters Wait, in Paper do you Mario. Have a piece you've done that on? On what? A, a, a finished art piece that you've done that method on that you can show me because I don't fully understand what you mean. The Paper Mario? Yeah. Yes. I have several. Uh, it's... Let me just let me just throw in the chaos card, chaos card picture, wherever it is. That this. See, I th I put the shading down, and mm -hmm. and then w where the shade touches the line, I put in a highlight that's just the flat color again, mm -hmm. so that way it it. Gives it like this vintage Pokemon a, card kind yeah, of look. Yeah, it looks like old time comic booky. Yeah, that's cute. I call it the Paper Mario method. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to find like a shading method that's good. For a while, I was doing this thing where I would like, you know, if I just had like the empty line art, right? I would like fill in the hair. And then I would just go ahead and shade the hair while it was there uh -huh. before I filled in the next flat color. And it felt like it was faster. I'm not actually sure if it was, but it felt like it was faster. Hmm. Um, but like, you know, sometimes I, for the most part, I do this thing where, you know, I put all the flat colors and each like color is on its own layer, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go back over, I go over each layer like on its own and shade that one like part. But the annoying thing about that is, it makes it hard to be consistent. Cause yeah. like, right, like looking at like this picture you sent me, like her skirt and her tails, right, are on different like color layers. So you shade them separately, but if they're in the same region, so they should have like consistent shadows going the same direction. But because I'm shading them at different times, I'm like forgetting. <laughs> yeah. And also like, then you end up with like things like, um. Well, S doesn't really have it on her here particularly. But, like, you end up with, like, little, little bits. Like, maybe just the color of, like, a bracelet. Yeah. And then you just have to go and, like, kind of put, like, a, maybe a hint of a shadow that's, like, a pixel wide. Yeah. And it feels like a waste of time. Yeah. And, I don't know, there's gotta be a better way. I just don't know what it is. There's gotta be some other way. I wish I could do it like I see other artists do it. When I watch, like, speed paints of people who, like do like painter methods, right? Mm -hmm. Where they don't even bucket tool, they just scribble in, and it doesn't matter if it goes over the lines because later they just color over that part too. But yeah. I don't understand how they do it because anytime I try it just looks messy and wrong and bad. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. I know some people that uh, instead of, you know, trying to fill in all the colors all at once, with like a paint bucket or like a uh, a uh, you know the magic wand tool method, they just color it all by hand. Which I don't know how you can have the patience to do that. It's just it's, it, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Then again, this is the people that still use Photoshop, but uh, just. There's a, there's a better way to do it. It's a better way to do it, and some people just like to do it the hard way. Because that's what they're used to. Mm. I just, I, I want to learn a method that's efficient for me. Mm -hmm. But in order to learn that, I'd have to draw more and practice. And yeah. I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't draw casually anymore, which is a shame. Yeah. But I'm just so tired. <laughs> I getcha. Like, like, you know, when somebody uh, the other day was asking me for a reference for one of my OCs, I was like, uh, I was like, well, I have a bunch of pictures of her in my sketchbook from high school. <laughs> but since then, I haven't really drawn her often. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
got like characters I only ever drew once and then never again. Yeah, I'm I'm guilty of that too. We're terrible. <laughs> You just shading, that's what the stuff I'm on for this now, so maybe I'll figure it out with this. I know who to blame for that. Earlier peaks saw the virus concentrated in cities and suburbs, but the current surge is hitting remote areas that often lack a hospital or other critical care health resources. Well, that sounds like a problem. Uh, yeah, you know, you know how it is. Have it make sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. are my thoughts on Princess Sally? People are talking about how, how she needs to come back. Like, I personally... I can't participate in this discussion, so... Yeah. I personally have no strong opinions about Princess Sally. She seems like an interesting character. I just... I don't know. Would she fit in the current uh, comic canon? I don't know. I don't... Personally... I don't think she would, because it's so different. Sally's character is inherently connected to the Archie series so much. It's just like, it's her, her existence heavily relies on the continuity of the Archie comics. And I don't know if there is a good way to bring her into the main franchise, which that's what the IDW comics are basically uh, building off of. I wouldn't be opposed to her returning, as long as they do it in an interesting and unique way. Like, if maybe if they rewrote her entire character... Or, not her entire character, but rewrote some of the continuity so that she would fit better in that universe. Um, and, you know, and then there's that issue where a lot of people that want Princess Sally back are willing to harass the writers of the IDW comics, which is never good. Don't ever do that. These are people that are trying to write a good story with the restrictions that are given to them by Sega. Ultimately, it is Sega's decision whether or not to uh, bring any of the Archie characters into the IDW franchise. Uh, and also, you have to consider that Archie owns the rights. Like, you'd have to you have to not only uh, deal with Sega, but also Archie. And uh, you know, since Archie doesn't have the the rights to the Sonic series anymore. We have no idea what the right holdings for the Archie characters are currently. 
That's my opinion. That is my opinion. Personally, I have no strong feelings one way or another. And I know that there are some issues as to... There are reasons as to why they haven't done anything with the Archie characters nowadays. Get to think about it in a cri critical perspective. Currently, Amy Rose is mostly fitting the role that Sally was playing in the Archie comics. Yes, I agree. Amy already kind of has that role filled in the IDW comics, so I don't... Again, they'd have to make changes in order to fit Sally back into that, that universe. And, you know, if any changes were, be were made to Sally... Uh, there would be repercussions. A lot of fans wouldn't like that. <laughs> What's your favorite Sonic character? Uh, that depends on my mood. Some days I'll say it's Shadow, some days I'll say it's Cream, and some days I'll say it's Cosmo. <laughs> I want to do something with the tights here. Do I want to make them stripey or do I want to make them like... There's this one, this one really cute costume. This really cute mad scientist costume. And she's got like these... These leggings that are like covered in goop. And that's really fun. I kind of want to do something like that. How long is this stream gonna last? Until I'm done with this picture. Until I'm good and ready, damn. <laughs> Until I'm good and ready to end the stream. So just sit, sit tight, sit your butt down, or you can leave. It, it doesn't matter. Like, it's your life. You can do whatever you want. There's a bit of a... Yeah, that's so much better. That's the fun thing about Club Studio Paint. So if you if you drew your art a little bit too a little bit too wonky, like it's leaning to the side a little bit, you could just stretch it, and it'll look completely fine afterwards. I'm currently sitting here in Ralsei cosplay watching a live stream. What could be better? Ah, that's the life. That is the life, isn't it? I'm trying to figure out what to do with the these lashes here. I think what I want to do might be good. Like that? I'm just gonna uh, fix this. Mm, yeah, there we go. Uh, 
All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, back to this tight situation. These tight situation. It's okay, I am definitely gonna do the the goop. The goop on the tights method. The <laughs> that goop sounds. On the tights method. Yes. The goopy goopy pattern, because I think that's really cute. Now looks like a ghost. Is a ghost on the tides of night? And now it looks like a person! <laughs> Hang on, I can fix this. Yeah, it looks less, less like a person. More like goop. Yeah, there we go. We'll just put some goop here. Yeah, there we go. More goop. Fun, 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 fun. Fun, 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 fun. Fun times. Still looks like a person, but try not to not to think about it that much. <laughs> Thank you for the two dollars. Yeah, I can see somebody doing that. That's an easy comparison. How come they don't put any of the characters from Sonic Underground? Probably because... Sonic Underground is owned by Deke Entertainment and they probably have the rights to those characters. Um, I know they did put uh, Sonya and Manic in the... Archie comics, so they probably had a deal. Yeah, cause that makes sense, because Deke also did an Archie Archie cartoon, so they probably have some shared rights. And of course, uh, that's probably the reason why they can't use Cosmo in any stuff, because the character Cosmo is probably owned by the company that that produced Sonic X. this one. This is for uh, a collaboration that I'm doing with people. Yeah, Sega probably can't use Cosmo or her race, you're right. Archie was going to do a storyline in the Sonic universe that would in Sonic Universe, the comic, right, that would complete the story of Sonic Underground. They even showed concept covers at New York Comic Con. What happened to that? Did Was it just cancelled? Let's just get rid of the eyes for a second so I can... do some... Yeah, okay, I got that. I 
Actually, I've got a better idea. Make sure there's stuff. Let's just not do this part. And then invert that. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Invert it and boop. Oh, nope. There we go. And then we can clear that out. There we go. Now we can start figuring out some colors here. Nope. Clear that out too. And that. And that. I think I want to make these tights, or let's see. Let's figure out the base colors first before I start messing with some some line art colors. Definitely want the coat to be a white because it's the basic the basic color of a lab coat. color in there. Okay. Let's see. Where's my pen? There it is. I want to do like a two, two tone kind of thing, like a like a mismatch kind of kind of deal, because that sounds like fun.
Mm-hmm. Just sit around and like color for a while. Yeah. This S and T created Eggman. <laughs> like that. That's funny. <laughs> so let's see here. Just leave leave that up there. Get that.
There we go. Uh oh. Did did chat freeze? Oh goodness. to reset the chat. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> chat froze, so I had to reset it. There we go. Actually, I want to. I want to do something. Because now this looks Just uh, start over and just do it by hand. Thank you. 
Me mixing shampoos together, thinking I'm making potions. <laughs> why does chat keep freezing? Why is why is YouTube just not being good right now? Chat is it chat keeps freezing and I don't know why. Is it just on your end or it's just on my end. Chat stops loading. And I, like, I keep having... Like, chat completely broke when OBS crashed, so I have to pop out chat in order for it to, uh... For it to work.
I low-key want to be a witch, but what's the point if the they're probably canceling Halloween this year? I mean, you can still dress up on Halloween. You might not be able to go anywhere, but you could still get into the spirit of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not really going anywhere on Halloween, but I'm gonna dress up. Because I always dress up on Halloween, and I always will. <laughs> what I'm probably gonna do on Halloween is to do an all-day... all-day stream. And I mean, I might host a costume contest, so... There's- there's a reason to dress up. I'm Halloween for Halloween. Honestly, that would be a cool concept. Like, making an outfit that it puts together all of the elements of Halloween into one cohesive look and being like the spirit of Halloween. That'd be neat. <laughs> it up, be a wet up the season.
Having some problems? Yes. <laughs> Find more brushes. Let's find a nice background.
maybe if I had a grasp on the basic concepts of art, this wouldn't be so hard. <laughs> but no, I'm a sham of an artist. How do I background? I cannot help you there. <laughs> I can't even fucking shade my thing, so... Nah, spiders are too... Much. Having some trouble. <laughs> there are two ways I can do this. I can continue trying to work my absolute hardest on this, or I can take the easy way out. What's the easy way out? Uh, shade it like I would normally and ignore kind of like the extra lighting that should realistically be happening, but I'm not good enough to recreate. Because <laughs> she's like, she's doing magic -y beams from her hand, Oops. which are a light source. And so realistically, it should be like reflecting back onto her face, but the way it's making shadows go is not a way I'm good at. Hmm. So I can keep trying to fudge with that. Or I can just give up and shade it normally and uh, just pretend I do not see. <laughs> or I can uh, start over and try to do this a different way. These are my options. Ugh. Did download a handy mandy brush though. <laughs> There we go. 
That's a background. That's a background that I like. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to my sister who's sitting over there. I'll just stick with this. There we go. I like that better. I'm kind of liking this one shaving brush I downloaded, but this one's pretty sick. Wow! That looks super neat! Did! Nice, nice. I am done now. Oh, what that must be like. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I... Yeah, I like that better.
I'm done, but more can be done. Yeah, that that's the artist life. You're just like, this looks done. But what if... <laughs> what if I did this? What would that look like? <laughs> Yee, I like this a lot. Okay, I guess I'll stop streaming now, because I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> Gonna draw more of this SMT design? Maybe, I don't know. I just felt like putting her in a, in a Halloween costume, and it looks very nice. I like it. Hey, what happened to the... Oh. Something happened. Hang on. Something broke! I need to fix it. I need to fix it. It broke. One of the shadows got accidentally erased, so I need to redraw it. I don't know what you mean by that. There we go. That's better. Okay, now I'm gonna end the stream. <laughs> now that I'm done futzing with this, I'll be posting this on Twitter once the stream is over. Thank you for joining me, and uh, thank you for bearing with me as I uh, dealt with the uh, the technical difficulties, like how OBS ram randomly crashed that one time. Alright, I'll see you guys next week. Well, I'll be, once again, I'll be uh, part of this big Halloween stream a thon. That, that's 4 p.m. PST, 7 p.m. EST, where I'll be redesigning Sonic.exe. So look forward to that. Alright. Good night, everybody.